Hi everybody, um, in this lesson today we're going to be having a look at um, the temperature and how it affects Le Chatelier's principle, okay? So let's have a look. Now, before we were just looking at um, this reaction, A plus B um, gives us C plus D. Okay, now what we're going to be including is something known as enthalpy. You have two different cases, remember. You have your delta H. You have two different delta H possibilities. Your delta H can be positive or your delta H can be negative. When delta H is negative, you've got an exothermic case. So energy is released. Energy, okay, released. When you have a positive delta H, it means that energy is required. Energy required. And this is going to be very important in Lee Chatelier's principle because energy will have just as much importance as any other of those reactants or products. And let's have a look. Okay, so remember that this is endothermic, endothermic, and this is exothermic. Okay, so just keep that in mind. And let's have a look at what happens. All right. So let's say that for this particular reaction here, um, we know that the delta H is some kind of... Delta H may be equal to 28 kilojoules per mole. I can't fit per mole there, but it, it, it's meant to be there. Okay? So if it's positive, um, that means it's an endothermic reaction. And if it's endothermic, it means that it's energy requiring. Okay? So we know that if it's energy requiring then energy must be on the reactant side because it, this equation needs energy to even work okay so that's how I think of it alright now let's have a look at what will happen to your reaction when you start changing the temperature of the system around so say in this equation say that um, you have this reaction in a beaker and you decided to put it in the fridge okay so Basically, you've, the temperature of the surroundings has decreased. Okay, now, if you've decreased the temperature of your surroundings, um, that does something very, that changes the energy of the system, right? Because temperature and energy are very interrelated. So if you've changed the temperature and pushed it down, then basically the energy of this, the energy part will go down. Thermal energy will go down. And you treat this energy like any other reactant. So basically, using Le Chatelier's principle, you're going to figure out that your reaction is actually going to go backwards so that it can generate more energy, okay? Um, and what we'll find is that because... Um, okay? Because if we go back to our definition of, you know, your K value, which is C times by D divided by A times by B because if we don't put the concentration of energy here it doesn't exist concentration of energy right so because by changing something that's not even in this proportion by changing something external to this proportion you've actually changed each of these values Okay, so now what you'll find is that you actually decrease the amount of products you had, okay, and you're increasing the amount of reactants you're forming because you're going backwards. And so, um, and these don't happen in the correct ratios because now you've changed something external, okay, the energy is not part of this proportion. And so, that is why a change of temperature affects the K value, okay? So in this case, because it's gone down and this has gone up, in this particular case, K, C value decreases. Okay? So you can, because the top number decreases and the bottom number increases. So you can practically work out how the, how the equilibrium shifts and you can also work out how it changes your K value without having to, you know, memorize formulas or anything like that. Okay, just by pure understanding. Let's have a look at a second case. Let's have a look and instead of putting it in the fridge, instead of putting it in the freezer, we actually um, boil it. So let's say we've boiled it. 
boil, so we've put it into a 100 degree solution. And obviously that means that this energy here of the system has skyrocketed up, right? So because it's gone up, it can be treated like a reactant. It causes this whole chemical equation to shift forward and therefore to create more of C and more of D and less of A and less of B. So let us analyze what happens to the KC value, okay? So the KC value is the concentration of C times the concentration of D divided by the concentration of A and the concentration of B. So as I said before, um, this is not going to happen in the correct proportion anymore because you've actually changed something external that's not part of your ratio. So all your ratios are going to be wrong and your entire KC value changes. Okay, when you added a reactant, um, so forth, it didn't change when you achieved equilibrium. But this time, even when you achieve equilibrium, it will be different, your K value, when you affect the temperature. So as you can see, these two are going to go up, and these two are going to reduce, because they're creating those. Alright, so that goes up, that goes down, and basically the result is that your K value increases. Alright? So let us have a look at another case. Let us have a look at an exothermic reaction, okay? So even an exothermic reaction in the sense that um, A plus B gives us energy, so energy is being released, plus C. Let's just um, change the formula around a little bit. I'm just going to have one reactant at the end, plus C. Okay. So let's have a look in this case what happens. All right, let's compare them two actually. Let's see what happens when you increase the temperature and when you decrease the temperature. Okay, so when you decide to increase the temperature of this particular system, it's going to affect the energy. It's going to, the energy is actually going to increase. And if that energy increases, it has to be brought back down by Le Chatelier's principle. So, in actual fact, the reaction will move that way because that's the only way that you can um, use up this energy, okay? And go backwards. So, basically, you're going to generate more reactants and you're going to use up your product. And so, the Kc value, which is now going to be just concentration of C divided by concentration of A times by concentration of B, your K value is going to change because you're using up C so C is going to go down, and A and B are going to go back up. And you'll find that your K value, K value actually, KC actually decreases. Okay? Finally, when we look at a change of decrease of temperature, okay, if the temperature decreases, then this energy drops. Okay, which means that we have to generate a little bit more energy by going that way. Okay, so we're going forward. And this time, if we have a look again at a Kc value, K equals to the concentration of C divided by the concentration of A times by the concentration of B. Because we're going more forward, we're increasing the C value, we're decreasing these values, and so what you'll find is that Kc increases. Okay, so that is very important and that is quite difficult. A lot of people just want to memorize these. Try not to memorize, understand. It's the fundamental way of learning chemistry, okay? If you try and memorize everything, your brain's going to blow up, okay? You need to understand things like this, okay? Logical approach is best. Um, okay, so we'll go through another question in the next tute, so keep tuned and check out the website. There's a lot of free info and very useful stuff that you can um, practice. And of course, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me or you can also email me. Um, if you look on the website, there's my contact details and everything. Okay, hope you enjoyed. Have a great day. Bye.